finish with one last silly little story, uh, but it's not really mine. Everett Gross, you all know? Mm -hmm. Some of you. Everett Gross. Everett, Ever, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, poor guy. Um, I was at uh, London, Ontario, CGO, and Bill Back got up in uh, uh, open mic session and said, very similar to last night's discussion, he said, I teach Ricardo's theory of rent to my students, but how can I put it across to the lay person? And Everett Gross, who had two walking sticks, two hearing aids, struggled to the rostrum. And uh, from the rostrum, he said, uh, I come from a small town in the United States, and I explain economic rent to our citizens without mentioning economic, without mentioning rent. What I tell him is, a man has come to my town to build a factory. And he goes to Rialto and he tells the Rialto exactly how much land he needs for the factory. And she says, I've got exactly the site that you need, come with me. So they get in the automobile, they drive down the road, get onto the freeway, way out of town, they come off onto a local road and then onto a country lane, then onto a dirt track and eventually she stops. They then spend 10 minutes walking across fields where they've got bushes, marshes and God knows what else and they come to this field. She says this is the field, it's the exact size that you were suggesting you need and it's $10,000. And he looks but he doesn't look too happy and she says uh, what's wrong? He said well are there any houses near here perhaps the other side of that hill? She said no, no there's no houses within miles. Is there a railway? No, no, nothing like that. He says, uh, is there another road the other side of the hill? She says, no, no, there's no other road. She says, why are you so unhappy? He says, well, I've got to build a factory. To build the factory, I've got to bring in the materials to create the building. I've then got to bring in all the machinery for the factory. Workers have got to come to the factory every day. The goods that are produced have got to be taken away. I even run a factory shop at the factory gates and uh, uh, there's no consumers around that are going to pop into the factory shop. So she says, well, look, don't worry. Uh, I do have another site. So I get back into the automobile, drive down the dirt track, country lane, onto the local road, freeway, back into town. She stops in town by this beautiful site and there's a lovely road, well lit and uh, kept nice and clean. And got a, uh, I was going to say a pavement, but I recognise I'm speaking in a foreign language here, so I've got to say sidewalk, uh, either side of the road. And uh, the road has got gas, electricity, water, sewage, all the facilities that the previous site didn't have. And uh, she then says, uh, look, there's a station there where trains go beyond the state into other parts of America. Um, there's buses up and down this road all the time. There's a housing estate here, some of the houses for sale, some for rent. There's a wonderful hospital with doctors of international repute. There's uh, a school, and the school has improved dramatically. People are prepared to pay $80,000 extra. They live within the catchment area of that school. And um, she says the police, they're up and down all the time on this part of town, and uh, very little uh, crime. And as for the uh, fire truck, uh, the fire brigade even arrived before the fire started. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, well, this is wonderful. This is just what I need. So he pulls out his checkbook and starts writing a check for $10,000. She says, oh, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. This site isn't $10,000. But you said it was the same size as the first one we looked at. She said, it is the same size. Wonderful services you've got here. All the energy and water on the site itself. It's good schools, good hospitals, the housing estate for your workers and for your customers. You've got lovely road. Your goods can come in. Your raw materials and your finished goods can go out. The railway, the buses up and down, the police, the fire brigade. He said, "Yes, you're right." So how much is it? She says, "It's a hundred thousand." $100,000. He said, well, it is worth it to me. So who do I make the check out to? Is it to the fire brigade? Is it to the police uh, commissioner? Is it to the school board? The hospital trust? 
Is it to the housing association, to the local council providing the road, or to the railway company, or to the bus company? Who do I make it out to? You don't pay it to any of those. You make it out to the gentleman who is selling the land. And he's going to, oh, he says, I've got it. I give him the 100,000. He keeps 10,000, and he gives 90,000 to all these agencies. She said, no, I'm sorry. He's retiring to Florida, and your check is going to be his pension. So how do you pay for all these wonderful services? said, well, we wait till you build your factory and we have a property tax on the building. And when you employ staff, uh, a payroll tax. In my country, we call it national insurance contributions by the employer. And uh, the workers will pay taxes, which will make your goods more expensive. And, of course, there's a sales tax on the finished goods. He said, but that's not fair. You're expecting me to pay twice. I pay once to the gentleman who's shooting off to Florida, and then every year again, I've got to pay for all these services. And I argue that's what we do in our economy today.